Pampers. I mean, really, does anybody want to remember that and treasure that? I mean, personally, I just don't. And then there's the time, like, when we started buying organic, and we're going to Publix or whatever grocery store, Kroger, that we were in, and my child is having, like, a come apart, and I'm about to rip her arm out of the socket to get her out of the aisle where the gummy snacks are. Because we have gone organic, and she cannot have the door of snacks anymore because they have red dye number 40 in them, and we're not buying those anymore, and she's, like, losing her ever-loving mind, and you're like, oh, my gosh, like, I don't want to remember this. I mean, do, do you want to remember that? Like, you're wanting to spank them, but you're in the grocery store, and you don't want to embarrass yourself or get DHR to come arrest you in the grocery store. I mean, it's just a not, it's just miserable. But the most memorable moments those are the Kairos moments. Those are the moments when eternity collides with time. And so I'm going to give you an example of just a few of those, and then I'm going to wrap this up about how God wants us to have a Kairos moment with him. So this is a Kairos moment. This is my own post-delivery picture, which I can't believe I'm showing you all this. I must love you to be able to show you this picture. But this is the moment when they set my baby girl on my chest after I pushed for an hour. That is the Kairos moment. That is a moment that I will never forget. And yes, I have a picture of it, but you don't forget that. I mean, you will never, ever, as long as you live, forget that moment and how that felt. Two Kairos moments for me happened in this past week. This note, I don't know if you can all see that, but I, um, we were in church last Sunday, and my sweet little boy who clearly is phonetically spelling. <laughs> He's in kindergarten. <laughs> and so he would, you know, Valentine's Day's coming up, so he was just doodling. And I didn't know what he was doing, but he had written hearts all over the front side of this, and he folded it up, and we were singing. Um, it wasn't unusual for him to be doodling, but we were singing um, David Crowder's Oh, How He Loves. Y'all went, Oh, how he loves us, oh. Um, and that song is so special to me. But that sweet little six-year-old, Davis, he, um, he looked at me and he handed me this note while we're singing, Oh, How He Loves, about how Jesus loves us. And my sweet little boy is looking up at me with the sweetest puppy dog, most precious face. And he says, Mommy, I love you. And at that moment, you know, all he thought was, I love this woman so much. She's my mommy. She is everything to me. And I love her. And you know what? Jesus was saying that through that song to me. Oh, how he loves you, Rachel. And you love your child the same way. That was a moment I will never forget. I have this little card in my Bible, and I swear I'll have been there till I die. Because that precious little boy, he knows his father loves him, but I am tangible to him. And... We all know, those of us with children, especially with children who are little when our husbands have died, um, the, tang the, the non-tangible part of death is what is so hard for a child, not being able to touch their daddy. That was a Kairos moment. When I watch my child sleep, this is a picture of my little girl this past week. Okay, so I have to tell you what happened before it. Because I was on the phone, okay, yes, okay, so any mother with a toddler or children, you're like, oh my gosh, like the phone, like when it rings, they just automatically rush to you and need you and have 50 questions for you. And so, at, right, right before this had happened, I was talking to a friend who I talked to in a while, and Campbell had interrupted, I mean, five plus times, and finally I just said, you go to your room and I will deal with you in a minute. So... I mean, I was just, you know, stomping back there, ready to get the switch out. And um, I know y'all are like, she's so precious. How could you ever spank her? Let me assure you, she is. Is precious. <laughs> but the sister friend needs some spankings. Can I give an amen? So, anyway. So, she, um, so I go back there, and sweet baby girl, she had gone to her room, and she just fell asleep, y'all. And I was like, bless. She just didn't need to spank it today. She just needed a little nap. <laughs> and so I took a picture of her because I was like, that's so sweet. And the guy had shown me this, the whole Kairos and Kronos thing. I was like, oh my gosh, I have to show y'all the picture of Campbell because it was just so precious. Of course, that's always a Kairos moment when you see him smiling and happy. But um, last, and then the last one for me is last year on Mother's Day, I was speaking and my mom had come and it was a really rough time. Health-wise for us, my little girl, that when you saw sleeping, has asthma. And so we were just, oh, heavens, it was just not good. We were in a cycle of just not good. 
And uh, my mom had sent me a text, um, something to the effect of, um, I hurt for you just like you hurt for your children. And honestly, it was like the first time that had ever clicked with me that she was my mom too. I knew she was my mom, but I didn't I didn't think of her like I think of my children. Does that make sense? You're, you know, it's just that, I mean, y'all are like, seriously? Like, that's kind of weird. But honestly, like, you just don't think about your mom hurting for you the way you hurt for yours. And um, it, that was a Kairos moment for me. I mean, it was one of those where I was like, wow, oh my gosh, yes. Um, let's see, let me go back. Um, Kathy McFarland says, Kairos is an ancient Greek word meaning the right or opportune moment. It is used to define a specific time that exists in between regular time a moment of undetermined period of time in which something unique and special happens. A watershed moment that affects every aspect forevermore of the person's life, and it's measured with the nature of time that is defined by quality rather than quantity. The mystery of time is able to be explored, understood, and known through the deep study of God's Word. The Kairos Word is used 81 times in the New Testament Bible. And in each instance, we realize through our studies that it is a time stopping event. We've all had one of those in our life the day our husbands died. It's a significant and special adjustment of time made by the Lord God himself to move his will at the beat of his timepiece. Today may be a Kairos moment for you when God calls you out tonight to feel his love afresh or again, honestly. Because when we lose our lives and experience his love for us, we gain all that he has in this life and beyond. To live is Christ and to die is gain. So you're like, so what? I mean, seriously, like, it's Valentine's Day, Rachel. We don't have our husbands. Like, really? I mean, don't, please don't preach to me. Like, I'm just tired of hearing the, I need a Bible verse to get myself out of this funk or whatever. Here's the so what for me. And I can only speak for myself and maybe it'll minister to you. I need a Kairos moment with Jesus every day. He says, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. It's a promise in James 4, 8. A moment when the time and the clock and the space stand still and you look at Jesus square in the eyes and he looks at you square in the eyes and you just get a hug. We need a Jesus hug every day. And when you feel that squeeze and that hug, your tank is pretty full. A moment where we're quiet and still enough to hear him say this, that, do this, do that. Or a moment where we get filled up with Jesus. Our chronos moments are not those moments. The moments when you're in the grocery store, they can be Kairos moments, of course. But I'm talking about the initial hugs from Jesus. We need the moments that fill our cup to overflowing. Because let's be honest, when you're widowed, it's pretty easy to be empty. I mean, isn't it? Yes. Sometimes, because you feel like, why? You know, you just want to know why. The Jesus hugs when we fall in love with that man and forget in that moment that there is anything else or that there ever was anyone else. Are the Kronos moments good? Oh, my goodness, yes. Are they sustainable? No. And time keeps on ticking and our well dries up. Kairos moments with Jesus never dry up and they can never be used up. And then, and only then, when we believe that to, that to our core, that Jesus loves us, can we sit and ask and listen to the answer to the question, God, what do you want me to do with this? What do you want me to do with this life? Because tonight is not just about coming and hearing my story, whoever's story. God wants more for us than that. He wants to change us from the inside out. And then maybe, just maybe, today is your Kairos moment where time will stop and eternal perspective and time collide. In 1 Thessalonians 3.12, Paul writes to the church, May the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else just as ours does for you. So, here's the deal for me. This is what I sat in the counselor's office this morning at 10 o'clock and talked about for an hour. So do you want to hear my counseling session? I'll share it with you. <laughs> because I'm vulnerable. <laughs> and you know, I haven't been to counseling in, um, since my first husband died. It's been 10 years and I just started about three months ago. And today, um, she said, Rachel, she was like, you're, 
you're not being a human being, you're being a human doing. And I was like, well, that kind of hurts. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the deal. It, the verse says in 1 Thessalonians 3.12, it says, May the Lord make your love increase. And y'all, we are some good self-reliant people, aren't we? Like, we can change a light bulb, I can call the plumber, I can get my yard cut, I can fix dinner, I can fry it up in a pan, and I am a W O C M A N. I mean, anybody? I mean, we got it. I mean, we got this. We do. We've got this. And we can make it happen, but there are just some things that I cannot do. I cannot fill my love tank. You cannot give yourself a hug. You cannot give yourself a hug. Jesus is the only person. And y'all are like, seriously, girl, why you got to bring Jesus back into it? But y'all, I'm telling you, I have tried. I have tried. If you could give yourself a hug, I would have already done it, let me tell you, a bunch of times. But I cannot give myself a hug. Only Jesus can. And I can do a whole lot of things, and I am really self-reliant. But Jesus doesn't want that for me. He wants me to rely on him. 100%. And that is a hard lesson for a girl like me who's lost two husbands and who everything in my body wants to protect myself and wants to protect my children. And what God tells me every day is, Sister, I'm the only one who can do that. And He tells you the same thing today. When God says to you, just let me give you a hug, just let Him give you a hug. Because tonight might be the night that you just need a hug. He ordained these days for you. First, uh, Psalm 139, 16 says, All the days, all the days, the day your husband died, the day my hus- both my husbands died, all the days were ordained for me and were written in your book before one of them came to be. He knew that today might be a Kairos moment for you where you let him give you a hug. On Valentine's Day, I want to just read this real quick. It says, Come to him and drink of the sweet waters of eternal life while there is still time. The last invitation in the Bible closes with these words. The spirit and the bride say, Come. And let the one who hears say, Come. And let the one who is thirsty, let the one who wishes, take the water of life without cost. Will you just come? to a place tonight of rest where you don't and he does. Will you? Let's pray. Oh God, I see pain. I see a heart so deep. My own included. And God, we just want to hug from you. And you have just lavished your love on us. But God, Unless we believe, unless we reach out our hearts and say, just hug me, Lord, we will never know that peace. We will never know that joy. Lord, let tonight be a time when eternity collides and you just love on us. Let it be tonight where we just fall on our beds and we just say, Jesus, love you. What you first loved me. We are so grateful for who you are. We're so grateful that you got us up this morning. God, I pray that you will use every story in this room for redemption. That you will use every story in this room to touch many, many lives. Because God, when we sit at your feet, we cannot not share. We cannot not want to go. <laughs> Find that girl who's hurting or reach out to that woman at Target who needs somebody just to pray for her. And as awkward as it is, Lord, if we hear your voice, I pray that we will respond. I pray that we will respond tonight to who you are and to who you are as a lover of our soul. God, I pray that you will let us feel emotions that we may not have felt in a 